started while we're waiting for everyone else. Hello. 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 <laughs> How's it going? Pretty good. Going all right. <laughs> I'm typing something up real quick, so forgive my silence for a few seconds Hello. while everybody else joins us. Okay. Hello. Good morning. It's evening over here. It's morning somewhere. He's not wrong. And it is. Not wrong is all that oh. I ask. I don't necessarily want to be right. I just want to be not wrong, you know? Well, that shouldn't be too much trouble. You'd think. But I'm often wrong. Good morning. Hello. How do? Oh, right. Depends on how much I've had to drink. <laughs> What's up? Hello. What's up? Good morning. Let's see. Who do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's everybody, including not counting me or the sound bot. And for posterity's sake, um, we will be getting started as a couple quick housekeeping notices. I want you to know that I don't know about the change of dates uh, from Wednesday to Monday. It won't be until if it's in if it happens, it won't be till August ish. But as a heads up, if it ha I'm going to try and keep it from happening. I'm not exactly sure how everything's going to shake out, but just a time frame. It's not like this week. Oh, OK, cool. So other than that, um, I don't think I have any other housekeeping notes um, other than to let you know, as I sent the message, we will be advancing to level five tonight. Um, I can, I, I can, of course, delay it until the end of the game if you want, or we can start with leveling up. Level up, level up, level up. Yeah, I already did. Yeah. Well, there you go. I have not yet. <laughs> Help yourself. Yeah. It's gonna take um, me a little bit, y'all. Please take your time. Levels go. I will uh, refrain from offering any help, like I usually do, because everybody knows what they're doing at this point. But if you do need my help or want some input, I am here for you. Um, I will point out, just a side note. I don't know if anybody's thought about this. Mars now has Fireball. Yes. That's okay. probably nice. fine. Okay. I don't I know if I get new spells. 
Uh, I don't know. Usually our neighbors do, but I don't know. I get an arcane firearm. I know how to turn one staff or run into an arcane fireball as a conduit for destructive spells. You artificers can now cast second level spells. There you go. Okay. Fun stuff. The old, the old half caster. Alchemist spells. Artificer alchemist. Okay. So as you when you do drag your class over, you, that should be should pop up anything that's automatic. The rest will be choice by choice. Uh, I, uh, Straya, I was arguing on your behalf at my kind of side gig part time job that I have. Um, <laughs> escape room. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but, you know, it's just like bored around the house type things. I go Monday, Tuesday, or Tuesday, Wednesdays. But a lot of the people there are D&D players. And so we were having nice. a vigorous discussion on the best druid subclass. And I was arguing on your behalf for Circle of Stars. Because I don't really have an opinion on which is the best druid subclass. Circle of Stars is definitely a good one. Best though. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really have the preference. My favorite class is not Druid, so I don't have a favorite subclass. I definitely find myself going to Druid more often than not. And that's not a bad thing. Let's see. I have an immensely, immensely lazy preteen in my house right now, and my hotel room, I suppose, would be most accurate. He had the audacity to make for him the ask to lay in bed while playing a video game and ask me if I would make him ramen noodles for dinner. <laughs> you mean like the noodles that can just be microwaved? That is that is correct. Excellent. <clears throat> My character is not leveling up. I'm trying to. Let's drag this over to you. Try that. I pulled that from your sheet. Drag that onto your sheet from the top left, that little dragon, and drop it on the middle of your sheet. If it doesn't work, let me know. There we go. Um... Yeah, he's he's at that age where he's fighting his laziness. He left his suitcase in the car when he came back from Nana's, and it had his Xbox in it. And we're on the fourth floor of the hotel, and he's like, Dad, will you go get my suitcase? I'm like, absolutely not. He's like, but it's got my Xbox. I was like, which is why I said to bring it in when we first came up, and you said, no, it's okay. Sounds like a you problem, it's... my guy. And he was like, <sighs> I said, I'm going to go get on my laptop because I brought my shit in. And he legitimately sat there and watched, like, cable TV instead of, you know, YouTube on his Xbox for, like, 45 minutes before he finally won the battle against his laziness. And he came in. He's like, will you go down to the car with me? For what? For what? Me to escort you? You Laziness. That's teenagers, though. Oh, my God. My my older two are coming out of it slowly, and he's going into it, and I don't know if I got it for one more. I don't know. All right. I uh, know Artificer is new, and I know, Jess, you're uh, a little new to Fantasy Grounds still a little bit. Um, yeah. Gonna, so do not stress or strain. I'm going to take a look, make sure everything is good and comfortable. What's your subclass? Alchemist? Um, yeah. Um, so... First things first, do you mind if I drag a couple spells onto your sheet? You can. Alrighty. Flaming Sphere Ooh. is now on your sheet. I'm going to put that same dash A that I place on uh, 
automatic spells because they're, they're artificer spells, so they don't count towards the ones that you have to get. So that's number one that you get. I clicked something somewhere. There it is. Okay. Um, that's a level three alchemical savant. Uh, you develop Masterful Command, Magical Chemicals. Whenever you cast a spell using your alchemical supplies as your spell casting focus, which is almost always, you gain the bonus. You gain a bonus to one roll. That roll must restore hit points or be damage roll, dealing acid, etc., equal to your intelligence modifier. Alrighty, I'm not sure how to implement that, so let me set this over here. So it's going to be a thing with material components. And then you will also get spells. I know that. So let me pull up your spell casting. Again, artificers not super familiar with them. I'm new to them. So they're like clerics, I recall. Is that accurate? Oh. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's what I thought. All right, well, for simplicity, I'm just going to go ahead and add these spells to your sheet so you don't have to worry about it. I'd rather you guys focus on the story and having fun. Let me worry about the mechanics until you're comfortable. So you have Alter Self, Aid, Arcane Lock, Blur, Continual Flame, Dark Vision, Enhance Ability, Enlarge Reduce, uh, Heat Metal. All right, so those are all your spells, and you should automatically have the Flaming Sphere and Melf's Acid Arrow prepared. So Looks like it. And preparing spells, let's see, equal to your Intelligence modifier, half your Artificer level rounded down Intelligence. So you should have, five, you get to memorize five spells per day, bearing in mind that the ones with the dash A don't count towards those. So I'll let you pick those. All right. Take your time. And that's it. I'm going to take a look at this uh, alchemical savant. We'll deal with that in a bit. The rest of it is the same. It's all automatic. So yeah. does anybody anybody else need any help with their spells or class? I have a similar issue with mine. I'm just an artillerist on, as opposed to artificer. I think I've got uh, mine more or less already taken care of. I just can't decide. Uh, I get a two additional... Mm -hmm. um, Second level spells in addition to the two I get for my fifth level one, right? I didn't understand the question. So, um, at fifth level, as an artillerist, I have two spells that I'm always, uh, yeah, starting at third level, you always have certain spells prepared after you each reach particular levels. Uh, so as a fifth level artillerist, I have Scorching Rain Shatter. I've already went ahead and I've added those, but uh, if you look on your spells. Yeah, the uh, scorching ray and uh, shatter, as well as further up shield and thunder wave. I've put a yeah. dash A after them. That okay. pretty much signals to you what those spells are that are yeah permanently memorized. Yeah, so those are like yeah, those are permanently like prepared, so I don't have to like prepare any any others out. Correct. So, um, I'm just saying, like, do I get like two additional second level spells that I could prepare, or do I? Or am I good so, to go as it is right now? So it, it's the same thing. I'm, where did Misty Step come from? Misty Step was from my uh, Fae Touched ability. Got it. That's what I was curious of. So you get all the spells on your spell sheet. Uh, as I said, so not super familiar oh. with our artillerists, or I mean artificer, but oh. clerics, I know everything there is to know about clerics. So since they function like clerics, you get everything on the list. And then you oh, memorize... Okay. Uh, intelligence, so three plus two, so you get to memorize. I'm going to change it to preparation. All right. So for preparation purposes, you always have shield, thunder wave, yeah, uh, scorching ray, and shatter. Not yeah. counting those, you get to check five on that preparation on the left. What five you pick? It looks like you got more than five, so you have to weed out a few. Yeah, I'll, but I'll go ahead and I'll... I'll... That's at your own pace. Yeah. So, the how about the rest of you happy people? Everybody comfortable with your level up? 
Yeah, so I think I got everything. I had to go through Tasha's Cauldron, where my um my circle spells come from. Indeed, and, indeed. Uh, and add the spells that were given to do it through that. But I think mm -hmm. otherwise, I'm good. I have a question. Indeed. Indeed. You accept that oh. container? Sorry, but <clears throat> How do you keep track of your sorcery points? I have a little um fuck where is it? It's part of my sorts of uh, actions and effects. I have like thing meta magic sort points. Do you mean know. like it's like like dots beside where it says meta magic as like a sorcerer action? Yep. I think I had to create that or I had Tony help me create it. I can't remember. I believe I created it. How do I okay, so I, I have one like that too. But I need five dots now instead of four. How do I add a dot? I also have four dots. I need six now. So how you change it is you see where it says Sorcerer F Actions and Effects, that gray banner? Yep. That has a magnifying glass, too. There we go. If you click that magnifying glass, it has a uses. Uh, uh, why do... S I'm sorry. Um... No, go ahead. Why do some of these, um, oh, check mark. I gotta delete that check mark. I thought I so, did, though. For you spellcasters, uh, in preparation mode, um, check marks is how you memorize. If you are noticing, especially probably Estrella, probably only Estrella, to be honest, um, your spell list is probably getting super long. After you finish in preparation mode, if you change the mode to combat mode, it hides all spells that are not memorized. Makes your spell list a little less scroll heavy. But whatever yeah, you like. I'm gonna look and see how many spells I can have now. Beautiful. And actually edit my ability effect. It doesn't let me, or that uh, option isn't coming up. What is it for adding sorcery points? Which so it's the oh. meta magic ability. Meta magic. I just clicked on it, Tanner, and then just like press five, and it like auto filled it. Yeah, just not seeing that option somewhere. So, uh, on the far right of Sorcery Actions and Effects, just to the left of the green plus is a very faded Oh, gray that one. Magnet. Okay, there we go. It's the one on the Perfect. banner. Thank you. I'm here so the, for you. So, the ones with the A don't count, and I can just check them? Yes, you keep them checked forever, and they don't count towards your five. Thank you. My pleasure. That's the beauty of your subclass. You get those automatically. And everyone's cantrips are upgraded. That is correct. Oh, yeah. Can I have some cantrips? Sure. Yeah. Just let me scroll over here and delete your character. You can build yourself a new one. No. Is your kind of a mm -hmm. elf? Question mark. Um, not get like any. I don't think elves just intri intrinsically get. High elves uh, do. High elves do get cantrips. Yeah. I guess I do have dancing lights have from one. Drow. I have one. I just wanted more. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you greedy son of a bitch! I was just being greedy. Does anybody have the spell dispel magic? Uh, I can uh, change it. Or, yeah, I, I think I do. I mean... Mars has counter like I have it. In, I have it in my spell list, so like I actually have it. But I'm just wondering if I should prepare it or not. I didn't take it's either it. Either that or uh, call lightning. I'm sorry. I thought I did. Oops. <laughs> I took slow instead. Do we think we'll need it, or should I just keep with call lightning? Well, it's kind of always good to have. Uh... <clears throat> It prepared. So what I prepared. I pre aside from the the artificer spells that I've already got prepared, I went ahead and I chose catapult, cure wounds, and identify for first level, 
and then aid and uh, enlarge reduce for second level. Nice. As a courtesy, um, when you're looking through your spells, it takes time to learn them. Any spell that says ritual, if you are able to ritual cast, you can cast those spells for 10 minutes instead of uh, an action, even if it's not memorized. So if you don't expect to be using a ritual spell, or I'm sorry, a ritual spell in combat might be save you the trouble. But well, the only reason point. I had identified prepared was just in case we like ran across something that may be magical in nature that we didn't know anything. Totally understand. Just making no. sure people know. Unfortunately, artificers cannot ritual cast, but druids can. Sorcerers can't either. Nope. That's why I don't take any. I mean, they can't if they take a feat that lets them. Yeah, that's I'm true. That. But that's kind of a waste of a feat, but whatever. <laughs> All right. So I'll let you guys look through it for simplicity. Let's go with this. I'll put that down. I'm going to step away for five minutes. Or, I'm sorry, just two minutes. I'm grabbing. In that case, I'll go ahead and I'll step away for a minute or two myself. Nice down 20. Right? Is anybody going to... Oh. Hmm. Do Is anybody gonna um um make any use from enhance ability? The target gains advantage on ability checks for one predefined ability and other bonuses in such cases. That can be very useful, but it's one of those yeah. ones where it's like like rarely rarely do we are we gonna probably plan to use it? So it's like in a situation where we know it's like, oh, we need to make a big strength check right here or something, right? Then like you casting that first is good. So then like if you, if you use it, you got to keep it in the back of your head that like anytime we're making ability checks, like, oh yeah, I can try and help with that. Yeah. So it could be really useful. It all We could also waste it and never use it. <laughs> <laughs> Which maybe sounds like the way we'd actually play it. It yeah, unless does. like we knew we were going into like yeah, like you said, strength situation or like going to talk to somebody where you might need a little bit of extra persuasion or something like that. How long does it last? Oh, it lasts an hour. So it can be useful, yep. Is it concentration though or no? It is. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's kinda of tricky too, right? And that's what I don't like about it, the concentration. A lot of good things yeah. to concentrate on, yeah. That's what druids kind of struggle with. A lot of their spells are concentration. <laughs> Concentration is a very unique dynamic introduced in 5th edition that changed a lot. I like it personally, but it is a challenge sometimes to pick which spells you want to concentrate on. Yeah, blur could be useful. Mm-hmm. Does anyone else, uh, Spellcaster, have Charm Person, by the way? No. Uh, no. 
I have like an awkward use of it. If someone's attacking me, I can charm them. Yeah, I just have suggestion. <laughs> Which is in a way just, a better version. Just, just, just yeah. suggestion. Just, just have deal. suggestion. <laughs> Not a big deal, guys. And it's worked really well for us in the past. Oh yeah, like I'll probably never use it again. No, uh, come on! It worked well. We just <laughs> we just didn't use it well. Tony, yeah. I got a quick question. Um, how do I add uses to my rage uh, for tracking purposes? I noticed it had only two, but it should be three, and then I accidentally deleted it, and now I have none. You know how it goes. And I am manually tracking that shit. Come on, man! I just came back. All right. <laughs> Heard them like talking about the the charm thing. Like, oh, is this in regards to Basher? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anywho. Alrighty. So, heads up. Just a reminder of the investigator. It looks like Alex created the last two notes. If you want to create one for on this side of the red gate, you may. You do not have to. I will type out the name of the planet if that helps you. Hey, that Tom. you're on. Uh huh. Real quick, did you hear the question about the rage? Yeah, I didn't hear any question about rage. I apologize. Oh, um, I was raging. Sorry. I uh, don't have enough. I didn't have enough uses on rage, so I tried to edit it, and then of course managed to delete it. It's back now, but now it has no uses, and I don't want to manually track it. How many do you get? Three. Ta da! How do you do that, by the way? Uh, do you see the dark gray banner above Rage? Says class abilities. Yep. All the way on the right to the left of the green plus is a magnifying glass. Click it. Ah, okay. Right in front of my dang little eyeballs. It's it's faded. It's not your fault. Not your fault. Ain't that just the way? Ain't that just the way? So, uh, as a reminder, with the trip here on Rise, I am going to uh, have that, but for the notes, since you guys have had issues with it, I'm going to approach it from anybody who contributes at least one note information entry on that, and I will share it uh, publicly. Let's see. Which one is it? Which one's the new one? Through the gate to Rise. All right. I will share it. That's the new one. You can save it. You should have a little black uh, comment effect there next to PC notes. So anyone who contributes something useful will get inspiration next game. So for everybody last game, give all your characters one inspiration for this game. So everybody's getting one Thank inspiration. You. Because of that, I would encourage you to, it's a different dynamic. So I would encourage you to start using them more often. But this is just pieces of information, and it's not going to be policed in terms of I'm going to go through and see who did and didn't. It's really just to encourage you guys to use it for your benefit. It doesn't really benefit me. Um, so I'm not going to be going through and checking and counting. But it, use it. It helps you. helps the group. So we're ready to go. I'm just, mm -hmm. uh, as I make that first note on it, what was the name of the codex we were looking for? Uh, let me get the name of it. I don't want to mix up the name. I'll get it to you shortly. The Opus Eterna. Oh, I know how to pronounce it. I don't know how to spell it. <laughs> A-E-T-E-R-N-A. -E -E I, I put it in the chat. There you go. I just found it too. <laughs> yes. So everybody's ready. He's writing that first note up. You guys ended last game passing through the red gate. We're starting this game. You have exited or you have passed through the red gate you are now wherever this side of the red gate is i love that sound effect just saying as you pass through the red gate we're starting off the game on rise Roll initiative. Oh, shit. Wow. Oh. It oh, wasn't safe here after all. <laughs> Already on to a brilliant start. Oh, awesome. Let's see if I can... Oops. 
turns out all those people that didn't come back didn't come back for a reason. (laughs) Fuck, I need to put that on the shelf or something. (laughs) Wait, I have a trick. Wait. Yeah, there we go. Hey, I'm still Hazel. (laughs) There you go. Still Hazel. Now, as you guys are going through the red gate, as in any gate, you feel the yank of magic as you are pulled through the portal. In a blink of an eye, your landscape is replaced by a murky green liquid haze over what was Mr. Sarlu's gateway chamber. As his gateway chamber fades, you see coming into view tall snaky plants and they're kind of murky still as you realize it's some type of seaweed and it dawns on you that you're underwater the other side of the red gate is underwater and you have deep blue seaweed fronds hypnotically waving all around you as you go to look around seeing deep red coral reefs as the gate is lodged in a coral reef you have arrived on rise sunken and completely submerged the shock of this just the unexpected shock of emerging underwater you have to fight to prevent yourself from taking a breath. Give me a dexterity saving throw to avoid taking in a lung full of seawater. Would you would you take a constitution saving throw? I would not. Dang. Would you Unless take a, you sp- a, a strength saving throw to clench their jaw really tight? As long as you spell it <laughs> dexterity. Shit. Yes. I spent my um, inspiration, so I'll take the second one. There you go. All right. For simplicity's sake, I didn't roll it on you. So who... Uh, who failed? DC's 15. Ooh. I just got oh, a 15, so I assume that's a success? It's Question meter mark? beat. That is correct. You are safe for now. I, I don't Three see people. mine. Didn't count right. mine didn't come through. So let's see. Four. Didn't matter. He failed anyway. Mm. <sighs> oh, I, I could use my inspiration, though. I'll leave that up to you. Arthanis did, and he came out ahead. I do have three, no, so I should really. probably oh. use one and try again. Yeah, I had one, two. There we go. Alright, Arthanis. I will remove yours here. There we go. So, Cashoot and Arthanis both take in a lung full of air and begin sputtering. There are no damage, but you are poisoned and you are beginning to suffocate. That'll make sense in a minute. Those of you who succeed, you manage to realize that you're emerging, emerging from this portal submerged in water and you manage to hold your breath at the last instant. As you look up you notice two things. First, the surface of the water is only 15 feet above you. Second, when you emerge from a gate deeply ensconced in a coral reef surrounded by seaweed, that seaweed is more than happy to wave hypnotically, including around your ankles. If you intend to swim, you can do so, but the seaweed does not want to let you go without a DC-10 athletics check. Oh. Oh, that's a problem. Damn it. Oh, damn it. I'm not going to like this. Athletics. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Uh. (laughs) Oh, no. Can I cast a verbal spell underwater or no? You cannot. Not at the moment. 
anyhow. Ooh. Um, but if I use subtle spell. Oh, what? Removes... You have subtle spell? That Bitch. That's my component, thing. Right? <laughs> right? What's the question? Or what was the answer? I know, Tanner got really upset. Yeah, you uh, uh, you get to cast it without somatic or verbal components. I stand corrected. You can cast underwater without subtle spell. Oh, well, okay. Cool. So I would I would like to cast a spell rather than try my really bad athletics here. Okay. Uh, so I'll cast Force Tunnel. Just upwards. So I'll just launch myself 30 feet. Like, All right. I guess... I guess I'll probably launch myself out of the water in that case, but whatever. All right, so taking a look at these checks here, Estrella, you break free and swim up to the surface. For those, and of course, the uh, Arthanis is ejected from the water. Those of you who are not, you have the amount of attempts equal to your constitution modifier. That's how much breath you can hold. Ah. All right, so that was one attempt uh, on zero. my end. So before if, before I swim upwards, though, I'm trying to grab Hazel. All right, uh, and your next check, Hazel, you get advantage. Uh, give me another round of athletics check. DC is ten. Uh, I'm debating casting a third level spell instead. Uh, but it's only level ten. Uh, that's why I got a minus one. Can now the uh, help piss you? It. Now that you can. Fuck. <clears throat> Shoot! If you wanna roll that a second, uh, roll that again. You'll. Oh, I got another one. Forgot to roll that advantage. Jimmy, just roll a That's single better. die. That's fine. Had I known we nice. would be dealing with this. <laughs> <laughs> I think Techno, I you're the only one. Yep. Attempt two. Womp womp. <laughs> oh, and that would be your attempt to what's your con mod uh three. Oh, see you got a whole nother round for you gotta worry <laughs> everybody uh, else is free if you want to stay and help you can looks I like you got doesn't it. need it i can't hold my breath any longer <laughs> all of you managed to swim to the surface after freeing yourself splashing and spluttering you break the surface of the murky green water you see the shore is only 60 feet ahead and it is within a relatively placid grotto as you guys you don't need to make any checks you swim pretty effectively no issue there as you make your way towards the shore presumably there's a small ledge from where you are, whether you're swimming towards the shore or not, that <clears throat> over that leads from the shoreline and kind of overhangs the shoreline in this grotto. It appears to be built from gray stone that is shot through with deep purple marbling. So that's what you see ahead of you. Who wants to kind of build a new home here in the water and who wants to swim for the shore? <laughs> Of taking water walk, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> right? I have it, but I didn't prepare it. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a Every time. Swim. We're, we're I, all swimming. We're all swimming. Yeah, I, we swim. Yep, yeah. Swim, swim, swim. On. I probably not. could use Misty Step to get out of there, but uh, I was probably going to save that for <laughs> if I failed all three of my attempts. Yeah. I'd have been just I like should, I could have. I could have done the same thing, but like, eh. I actually have a quick question. Um, sure. for Ben, actually, is Techno not? A Warforged, or am I misremembering? He's an Altain. It's a uh, new race. Gonna... I don't know why I thought Warforged, because I was like, doesn't he not need to breathe then? Anyways, let's go. No, the thing is, is that I'm not like a Warforged. I still need to breathe. It's just that instead of having immunity to poisons, I have resistance, essentially. Ah, I see. Altain are like Cyborg instead of Mechanical, right? Yes. yes. Inst yeah. Instead of being full robot, they're cyborgistic. He's more the Terminator than like anything else, <laughs> I guess. I think the Terminator's actually robot. He's just oh, he got is? a flesh yeah. covering. He okay. Is, yeah. Okay. Never mind then. <laughs> Mister, the don't board. know shit. More like Android eighteen. All right. Yeah. There you go. 
Yeah, that works. <laughs> well, whatever oh, he is, he is swimming towards the shore with the rest of you. And as you are swimming towards the shore on that little rocky outcropping ledge, a bow-legged dwarf who is apparently very old, very aged, long, white beard, clad in dusty, homespun clothes. And as he grins at you, he may have one or two teeth, but most of his grin is toothless. He walks to the water's edge, and he has his slightly hunched over, and he has a bundle under his hand, under his arm, and he starts pulling as you reach the shore, and he hands you a towel, seemingly prepared for you to, or at least someone to exit. And he says, Hey there, off-worlders! Welcome to the arse end of Rides. I already hate it. I hate it here. Can I go back? Gonna <laughs> flutter his wings to start drying out his feathers. Ah! Sorry. It's okay. Uh, you're okay though, right? Yes, yes, it's okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, so, hi, small person. Are you a local? He says, I'm a Honigal. I'm the watchman here. Usually, it's very uneventful for months on end, and I just spend my time fishing and sunning. But, to be honest, you're the third group to come through the gate in the last six weeks. After eight months of no one coming through. Oh, gosh. Uh, well, and, this must have be pretty exciting for you. Not so much for us. He says you, you, no one had to be dragged out, not breathing. So it seems like you've done better than others. What, uh, what did become of the others? They pulled their friends out and brought them back to consciousness with spitting and sputtering and then they continued on that way he points down a road heading west it kind of climbs to a short ridge and then goes over the top oh are they looking for something what's over that way he gives like a Slight shrug. He says, over there's Buckle. A Buckle? Person? He says, it's a town. You can find what passes for civilization in Fort Buckle. Or we just call it Buckle. Oh, and, oh okay. And why are you here? I like it better out here where no one's bothering me. Just minding my business. Okay. And someone needs to hand out towels to those that come through the one-way gate. One way? Well, there is no way back. He points at the gate in the water. He says, well, it sank long before I was here. And... Many have come and tried to go through, and it doesn't work. And no one came through from the other side for a very long time. But no one can go back that we know. Isn't that great? <laughs> Why do you think that is? That nobody's been coming through here for months on end, and then all of a sudden they've just started appearing. He gives a shrug, and you get the impression of someone who's accepted that he's not long for this world, and these matters are not his to neither ponder nor give a rat's red ass about. But he does give out towels so that you're comfortable. Thank you. Does 
Does he look like a um, trustworthy fellow? Does he actually look like a fisherman? Does he... Roll an insight. Yeah. Well... He looks like a very trustworthy dwarven fisherman. All right, then. <laughs> well, I guess we make our way to Buckle, then. I, I guess, guess so. so. <laughs> Jinx. He says, good luck. Buckle's not so bad a place as long as you don't mind chag meat and working a grinder. I hey. keep to the sea, though, so you have fun. What do you mean, working a grinder? What is chad meat? Chag meat. There, You'll see them on your way to Buckle. It's... They're... They're... They're just beetles, right? You got beetles on the other side. We do. Small ones. Hmm. Have you Small... been to our side? He says nobody has been to your side who was born here like me. And you're... You're aware this is your new, your home now, right? That you're not going back that way. Nobody goes back that way. And there's no way off planet unless unless Maybe there's what another gate there. working in the wastes. But I haven't heard of it and I've been hearing for a long time. And what did you mean by grinder? Like do they force people to work grinders? Like what No, it's just the easiest job if oh. you're needing to make money. I told the ones the crag that came the crang that came through before you that he could work a grinder with them muscles, but he said something about for the accord, and I don't know what he wanted. Okay. Well, shall we then? On for another wayward adventure. Let us go. Off then. All right. Yeah. Honigal, as you guys, you know, stop talking to him, he kind of watches you go, waves, collects up the towels. All right. I am debating on how I want to do this, so give me a second. I'll mess with that in a bit. So, as you guys are moving along, you're able to travel fairly easily. And smoothly. So I have a map. And I can. Use the map. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to edit it. But it's extremely hard. It, it's fuzzy basically. Because as we zoom in. But I'll be sending it to you probably next game. But for the moment. You guys travel. Uh, across. The barren. Landscape here. It's not desert as much as it is just rocky and what is missing is pretty much most vegetation it's very uh, scraggly plants weeds things of that nature and as you guys are traveling away from the water you start to hear uh, slamming noises thumps where are they coming from you can hear they sound like they are ahead 
let me scout ahead a little bit, guys. Okay. Right. Okay. I'll create that telepathic link with the Kashuk. Am I still poisoned? As you, eh, I'll go. Oh, you can keep that twenty. As you guys are out of the water and you took a little bit of time, we'll go ahead and remove that poisoned effect. You and take it off both of you here. The poison clearing towels. So, uh, as you scout ahead, you notice that the noise gets louder, and you come upon exactly what Honigal described as beetles. Except, these are two enormous beetles, larger than an owlbear, larger, larger than most creatures you've seen. They are crowned with a trio of wicked horns each and they're circling each other and as you're watching them one finds an opening and charges and they lock horns and they try to tip each other or flip each other when they're unable they disengage and continue circling wow those are massive they are insanely massive. Um, they, they, they seem to be fighting, but their effort seems to be to flip each other, not injure each other. This is fascinating. You guys are currently about, well, Cashute, you're currently about 300 feet from them, but you notice naturally the path or location they've decided to have their flipping contest is right next to the road it's you you'll you'll pass within probably 10 feet of them if you stay on the road is there a way to go around yeah i mean the road passes across the the barren landscape but the landscape you could easily just go off road one way or the other as long as you're you know staying fairly reasonable in distance okay I'm going to, like, start a path. Okay. And, and like, motion the, the party to follow me off-road. Fair enough. These, uh... Would these this creatures... look like a, um... Sorry, would this look kind of similar to, like, what beetles do for mating purposes? Fighting each other over the, the female beetle? Give me a nature check. You called them crag beetles, right? I did. Okay. You are 100% on point. That is exactly what they are doing. They are competing for a female. Oh, this is like totally normal for the beetles. I mean, they're a lot larger than beetles back home, but totally normal. It's interesting. Well, we really shouldn't try not to disturb them. Or get under Oh, the... yeah, definitely not. So what is your plan? Go around. Not a bad plan. Yeah. It's a good plan. So as you guys are doing your best, you kind of make your way around. Are you guys... Uh, how do I phrase that? Are you guys making any effort to be stealthy? I will be. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, should have been. That's a good point. If you, if you need another sure. stealth roll from me. Do 
you, Tony. I mean, if we wanted to be stealthy and we talked about it, I could pa I could cast Pass Without Trace. I have it. You might need it. Because <laughs> we it just gives you a plus ten. Do you, you guys want up. me to cast it? it I mean, if you want. I believe she's asking because it is a high level spell. Yeah, it's level two. I, mean, yeah, I don't think we need it in this particular case. They're kind of engaged in their own thing. And as long as we're not, like, actively in disturbing them, I think we should be fine. I, yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Okie dokie. Famous last words. Okie dokie. Alright, so you guys pass. Let's see, what do we got here? Am I missing a stealth? No, I'm not. I see it here. So, you guys manage to get by them without attracting their attention. And as you're probably 200 yards, 200 feet on the other side of these crag beetles, you notice one finally wins, and it flips the competitor and as you circle around, it kind of starts this waving some antennae in the air, taking a look around, and it takes a look down the road at you guys. Not at you specifically, it starts moving along the road. And it's it's kind of stomping along the road. Towards us? In the same direction as you, but it's traveling along the road. I say we get off the road and let it pass us by. What's the I'm pacing like? There. Like, is, is it is it pacing us or it pacing us? It's definitely moving faster than you. If that's like what you mean. Yeah, let's let it by. Yeah, yeah. Also, is the female beetle anywhere nearby? You don't see it. Weird. Might be just be territorial. Hmm. Maybe it's I mean, listening. perhaps, but <laughs> usually those fights are just over a female beetle. I'm just shocked that it's not here. Maybe she's hiding somewhere in a crag or something. It's be a big crag. And he's heading towards it's funny, because it. it's a crag beetle. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, that's, that's why I said that. Uh. Jokes are With funny. Your... With your stealth checks, you guys kind of move off to the side, and the crag beetle lumbers loudly. That was a group stealth check. The DC was 15. You guys made it just by the hair. More have to pass than fail. You guys got four and three. Well done. Phew! As you pass, there you watch the crag beetle. It wanders off out of your sight. And I assume you guys start to look at wanting to move in that direction along the road. Could be wrong. You let me know. If that's the direction of Buckle, then yeah. Alright. You guys continue along. Travel for another probably two hours. And you notice that, again, as you travel especially Australia, there is a severe lack of plant life along this road. It's not a very planterous area. It's rocky. The soil is not sandy. It's it's just... It appears to be dried, sun-baked soil that may at one time have been verdant, but have, for a very long time has ceased to be so. Does it feel as though the land has like shriveled up and died or been poisoned in any way or is it just like a natural cycle that it's not 
thriving right now because it's an off season type idea. So as you stop to kind of take a look at the land and kind of get a look at this, you notice something both right away. Number one, that you have a very good es- estimation on what has happened, that the land has dried unnaturally. Something has harmed the land. Something has drained the life from the land. But when you're noticing this, you begin to feel a gnawing wrongness To the degree that it feels like the land itself, the air, and the entire area has something permeating it. <clears throat> and you, everyone give me an intelligence check. You can throw investigation in there if it makes you so happy. Okay. Almost had 19. Stupid fucking... Fuck this. Inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Astria's smarter than that. Thank you. Uh, uh, actually, Astria, I didn't get it out in time. <laughs> you would have advantage on that roll, so give yourself that inspiration back. Um, yeah. All of you um, start to feel this wrongness in a, in a less severe way. Kashut, Techno, Nalka, and Estrella, you begin to realize that this this taint in the essence of this planet is interfering with your boon of luck, the boon of the patrons. This blessing from your patron ancestors, it is being blocked. You, you could try to use it, but it would require a force of will. And attempting to overcome this and being unsuccessful would probably be a exhausting affair. But... Guys... This, this this doesn't feel right. Something is wrong. Did you swallow some of that water? Actually, that's a good question. Was that salty yes, water? But that's not what's wrong. Was it salt water, Tony? It was. Okay, just check. Definitely wasn't no. tasty. The earth, the planet, it, it's as if it's crying. It, it's talking to me, and it. There's this blanket of sickness that I feel just clouding the whole planet. Something's wrong. Very, very it's wrong. So sad. That's so sad. Well, the dwarf did say that we were in the arse of Rise. Perhaps we're just experiencing the tainted area of the planet. I believe he said the arse end, but, you know, artistic creativity. As you guys travel, finishing up your trek from the ocean side, a small settlement rises here against the rock face it's built against a a dull gray cliff essentially giving the area a a solid backing i would like to reiterate to the group that i only have so much skill with photoshop when i'm trans transitioning these maps over so when there's things on there that i just can't remove please bear with me i do the best i can but here's your map I only expect perfection. <laughs> you will be, you will be disappointed, Hazel. You can fuck off, Eddie. <laughs> what? Why? Why? Do, why can't I have some disappointment? 
You don't get disappointment. <laughs> I just get to fuck off, huh? That's exactly right. It's, <laughs> it's a it's a feature you gain after thirty years of friendship. <laughs> and he's endured too much disappointment from not That's getting true. his Danish. <laughs> there you go. Holy shit. That's fair. <laughs> Savagely accurate. Need, I love it. You need your Danishes. I I brought that son of a bitch donuts. After yeah, he's not he, he's he's not lying. He did he did bring I picked uh, up fresh Krispy Kreme donuts and brought him donuts so he doesn't get to bitch about Danishes anymore. True. Hand delivered to his job. I guess that makes up for it. It does make up for the Danishes. <laughs> But, like uh, on the uh, Fort Buckle here, you notice the buildings are constructed from a similar material as the walls, which are constructed from a similar materials as the cliff face behind it. The, the walls, all these stones are made of pale, uh, they are fit closely together and they have pale white mortar between them. Behind the walls, you see plumes of smoke that are kind of coiling up, and there are sev several men with heavy crossbows guarding the walls. The road continues and splits off going through the gate, but it also continues east to west along the gate as well. So, your tokens are unlocked. I'll let you guys explore a little bit, and as you kind of look around, you can see, take a look at the outside of the town anyways. As you approach this gate, we will resume after a short five-minute break for everybody to get a drink. Okay. Sounds good. All right.
for sale. One teenager. Sixteen. No thanks. What yeah, do you no do thank now? you. Nothing. He's he's just being. He's not doing anything wrong. He's got. He had his track award ceremony, and he he got home about twenty minutes ago. He's got a new friend. I'm not allowed to ask about. It's a girl. They're playing Minecraft together while he talks on his phone. <laughs> yeah. He's had girlfriends before, but he's just a very private kid. He doesn't like to talk about it. He really likes this one if he won't even talk to you about a friend. The, he's, I think he's like, he had a girlfriend and then he broke up with her because she was, what did he say? She makes her life harder just to have something to complain about. And then she doesn't listen when <laughs> I want it. <laughs> It's like, buckle up, bitch. <laughs> yep, you're in for a fucking bumpy ride on that one. And they, he said, she, she, she asks my opinion and gets mad when I, when I tell her something she doesn't like. I was like, yeah, I got a phrase for that. Whenever Tasha asks me what I think, I ask her the simple question. Do you want my opinion or do you want your opinion in my voice? I'll give you whichever one you want. I just need to know. Or do you want an opinion, or do you want me just to listen? That's also that's a that's a really good one. I don't agree with it, but I understand yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. I dislike it. Agree. Honestly, for women, it is an also well. I'm I'm not going to speak for all women, but for myself especially, venting helps me work through what it is that I'm feeling, so sometimes I just need to talk about it, and then I'm done. It's fair. Yeah, we don't yep. understand that, because we're just trying to solve, like, just yeah, it solve it. Doesn't make any I, sense to me. Yeah, I can't hear a problem and not want to offer a solution. I can't, yeah, like, it's, it's the equivalent. Crazy. If you could, like, imagine you're walking down, like, from the perspective of guys, like, imagine you're walking down the street, and you see, like, a I don't know, a cat on fire and you have a pitcher of water and the cat's like, I'm, I'm burning here. Leave me alone. Like, I, I, I can fix this. I have the no. water. <laughs> what the fuck? Just watch me burn. <laughs> what to do. Let me scream in peace. God damn it. it feels That's like what it feels like fire. to guys. That's what it feels like to guys. Yeah. I'm like I have the water. Oh, did you see like, that? There's like fucking video of like a woman with a nail in her head, and a I've guy's seen like, it. That's I've, fucking it's hilarious. Caught, it it pisses huh? me off to watch that video. I'll send it to you. It's it's I hate that video, and I love that video because it when you watch it so well, right? Because I've watched it, and I'm like, this makes perfect sense. She's crazy, and my wife's like, it makes perfect sense. He's crazy. I'm like, bitch, what? <laughs> but not to use up our game time on that, we can chat about that in game. <clears throat> As you approach, you see the wall and there are humans on the wall. They are carrying crossbows. They're not uh, shining knights of glory wearing full plate mail armor. More like a little different. They are wearing leather probably armor with occasional fragments of what you would guess to be probably crag beetle shell and as you approach they look down and say halt state your intentions And the man who kind of walks over and calls out to you is wearing a few more crag beetle shells around his armor, so he would probably be the one in charge, or at least at the moment. Uh, we came through a portal in the water, and we were told to come here. Can we come in? Please? He said, what? brought you through that portal what is your intention why are you here to explore this land and 
um, find out. We've heard stories that Rise used to, or, or what we call Rise, used to be a uh, impressive, goodly world. And we hope to learn from you. Roll persuasion, please. Yeah, I'm not lying. I'm just not telling the whole truth. Fair. That's why it's not deception. Aha. He kind of looks uh, flattered slightly, and he says, Well, well, I, I, I can see that you probably just want to come in and and rest and resupply as a start kinda, yes yes he kind of looks squintingly at the group before he says are, are you gonna make any trouble and he looks no, at each sir. of you for an answer no we're not gonna make trouble no. but trouble does seem to find us why would you say that? Why would you say that? I, I said it quietly. <laughs> so did we are, I. We are a capable group who, again, just wants to learn. We don't want to cause conflict. So, uh, you said that quietly. He didn't hear it. Um, He seems to believe you, and he makes a hand motion. He says, then you may come in, but ensure you stay true to your word and make no trouble. And the, the gate is pulled open, and as the gate's pulled open, you're able to pass through into the town. And he says to you, he says... You can head over to the tavern if you are looking for rest and respite. Otherwise, you may go as you please. Areas you are not allowed to go, you will know. And he makes a motion into the town, pointing to the north when he references the tavern. Where we're from, we have places known as... Um libraries or places of knowledge um, do, do you have something equivalent here uh, knowledge how in our case we we write it down on paper or, or tablets um, but some you know there's, there's a variety of ways so do you have like a just an area where, where knowledge is, is freely shared he says the only paper book in town is Woolley's Ledger in the tavern. He points to the north again. He says up there at Woolley's Tent is the tavern. If you're looking for books or knowledge, you're much better off moving to the monasteries to the west. They have books and they hold knowledge, but we do not have time for such luxuries here. We're trying to scrape together survival. Well, thank you for that information. Indeed, we will, we will happily check out your your town here. It is called um, Buckle, is that right? Fort Buckle. Fort Buckle, kind of excellent. He kind of motions. He says, well, get inside. We got to shut the gate. <clears throat> Can I shoot? I moved you inside. Yep, I was just about to, but... This save you trouble. Um, you notice there's two stone buildings along the right-hand side. Um, fairly large, well-constructed. There seems to be kind of a granary just a little to the north of you, some roads. But along the walls and the western side, you can see there are pens, large pens. And 
and you don't know exactly what's in them, but they are very large pens, probably livestock or something like that. I kind of revealed the whole map. I wanted you guys to be able to see the rest of it without the fog of war. You can't see anything but the shapes or the general outline of the maps. Nothing inside, but <clears throat> as you move around, you notice there is kind of a water uh, granary, water and food retaining area towards the center. Uh, where's the button? In this area. And up towards the north, there's a big tent that looks like the tavern he referenced, and the rest of the whole town has these areas of uh, pens where they seem to be keeping things. I would say we should, because uh, we're, no, we're in no need to go right to the tavern right away, right? I don't believe so. Is it morning or is it no. night here? It's probably late afternoon, probably an hour or two before sundown. Okay. So perhaps we should scout about first and well, I believe what the guards are saying, that uh, we likely won't find the opus here. Um, who's to say we might find a lead? But we, we, should, we should explore everything. The tavern might be the best place to find a lead, but... We should explore around, huh? We should also secure lodgings for the night, too. The tavern will probably be the best place for that as well. I suppose we could go there first, and then from there go about but wouldn't hurt to have a base of operations to start from too <clears throat> I suppose That's we could probably go ahead and split up some of us check out the monastery some of us check out the tavern and the others just kind of like scout around the town you know maybe in an hour kind of like uh, share what we've uh, came across I, 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 I could be wrong. Yeah, monastery the monastery is far away. Yes, yes. Oh, well, in my case. <laughs> and I don't think we should split up just yet. All right. Even though yeah. the guards seemed honorable and goodly, maybe their idea of honorable and goodly includes a great deal of suffering. Is this fort pretty like pretty crowded, or is it? Are there not too many people about? There's not too many people about. It's sparsely populated. Definitely not uh, a thriving metropolis. And do they seem like more like soldiers or like citizenry, I guess would be the question. Because they're calling it a fort, so I'm wondering if this is like a military installation. It is much more citizenry than it is uh, soldierly. Even the soldiers look citizens. Fair enough. We're out here Mad Maxing it. Cool. All right, to the tavern, I guess. Sounds good to me. Yes. Which we assume yep. it's—he yep. said it's basically in the middle of the fort. Right? Pretty much. He said the tavern was all the way to the north side of the fort, against the back wall. As you guys kind of move through, you can kind of see in some of those pens. Um, the back pen, this one specifically, you can see a very, very large beetle in there. And Estrella, with your previous check, it's almost immediately apparent to you, you have located the female beetle. Uh-oh. Ah. And the rest have smaller beetles, um, probably a different breed, more like livestock, you'd imagine. Is the um, the other male beetle that won here? You don't see him. That's sad. They were fighting over a female they're not going to have access to. Mm. We should free Or her. they're controlling it. I was going to say, is there anybody like working in that pen? <clears throat> there are. There's probably two or three people in there. What did they say about making trouble? Techno, you notice uh, that building just near you has a, not the stone one, the tent, 
has a sign that says Woolly's Tent, W-U-L-I. W-U-L-L-I, you said? W-U-L-I, Woolly. Woolly. Type it in. Ah, all right, cool. I'm, like, calling out to the workers in the pen. Hello? Yeah, you call out one of the workers' turns. <coughs> it looks to be the one scooping up uh, some beetle feces. And tur turns to you, moves over, and says, yes. Is this, um... Is this the female the two were fighting about in the road? This is where... There was beetles fighting again? Yeah, there were two of them. And then the one that won, like, pretty quickly took off in this direction. She says, yeah, they fight. And he, that one's been keeping them away for a while. Her mating season will be in a few weeks. He's declaring the territory. And once he's ran them all off, we'll release Marigold here for mating. Oh. Oh, okay. So, like, do you guys control the mating of these beetles? Or, like, what do you guys do with them? The, the uh, guy says, we, we control the mating of them, and we keep the population to serve both of them and keeping them from going extinct and making sure it benefits those who are eking a living. So, like, population control and also um, using them for benefits. He gives a, a nod to your summation. Well, I mean, we just didn't want to get involved with the fighting in the in the streets, obviously, but I wanted to make sure that, you know, there was a reason and not just crazy beetles <laughs> out on the road. It's smart not to get in between them. They settle their issues usually without killing each other. <laughs> well, back home, uh, beetles do the exact same thing, except uh, they are much, much smaller. So, uh, you know, those ones being as large as they were, I was not going to get involved. Probably why you're smart enough to be standing here. Hmm, yes, I agree. Okay, well, thank you. Um, yeah, I was just kind of curious. Marigold. <laughs> That's a pretty name. And I'll just wander off. He goes back to dealing with his, uh, fecal issues. <laughs> as, you, as you guys make your way over to the tavern, it doesn't have a locked door or anything. Um, but it does have a different map. Not necessarily requiring you to place your tokens. It's most for posterity's sake, so you can see it. <clears throat> the interior of this tent, very large tent, features several benches surrounding a smoking fire pit in the center. Beneath a hooded vent, so that rain, if it ever were to grace this area, wouldn't get in. And a curved bar covers the opposite wall blocking access to another door leading to an area that's nestled against the cliff. So, <laughs> as you can see, that that's the bar right here. It's, uh, right here. And it's got like kind of a, an, another tented area that's covering off a little alcove in the cliff, something back there, possibly storage. But, uh, you notice that as you step inside, there is a pretty strong alcoholic smell mixed with earthy scent from the bonfire. And as you see, there is a were rat at behind the bar, or at least a large rat. He may not be a were rat. He looks up when you guys. And make your way inside, and he says, Welcome to Wooly's tent. I heard you had 
pass through the gate minutes ago. Welcome to the hub of activity for our Fort Buckle. I'm Wooly. I'm as close a thing to the town authority, I suppose, or they, they, the Baron and this Barony, I suppose. But come inside, make yourself comfortable. Thank you, Wooly. That news travels fast here. This is a small town. And you probably For don't get many video visitors. Only those that come through the gate. On the rest of Rise, no one really likes to come down here. Why is that? He mm. says, we are known as the Barony of Dust. Nobody really pays much attention to us, them that got plants and we have dust they mostly leave us be which is fine for us they go their ways and i don't think i shared this with you guys i'm gonna share it now i had it saved to share but just an image they included i thought it was cool yeah that's pretty cool but uh he said he makes a motion towards a, a table and he asks you if you are hungry or thirsty as he's answering your questions. Yes. Both. Definitely both. Uh, he makes a motion and what you probably would guess to be a female were rat <clears throat> makes her way over with a platter and gives it to him and he kind of spreads it out for all of you it's got chunks of beetly shaped meat from smaller beetles than the ones you saw um, seaweed that's been cooked a couple crustaceans and some cheese and some milk and he takes a pitcher as his daughter, wife, somebody brings him over, mugs, and he pours the fluorescent green liquid into each of the mugs. He says, first, is, first round is, of food and ale is on the house. And you and notice you as he's as pouring it, that ale is foamy as well as flour and it has flecks of what probably is algae in it carrying with it a sour smell we we appreciate this um uh, as we are new to this place what do you take as currency it's the same thing as those of you from the other side of the gate we trade in coin precious metals or we do barter if you need to but as i said this one's free thank you that is very kind of you mr woolly guess i'll try the drink it's sour is the beetle meat go is ahead the beetle meat crunchy it's not. It's actually been pulled out of the shell. It's greasy. It's chewy, but it's not bad. It's not bad tasting. Um, it's just kind of insect meat. Whereas the the uh, ale is sour, but it's it's slightly stronger than standard ale, but it's pretty obvious. It's made from fungus, moss, algae type stuff. Hmm, how interesting. I, mean, I worked at like a back home. Yeah. I actually worked at a brewery for a bit. I missed uh, what you said there, Kazu. Oh, he was just saying that he worked at a brewery briefly. Hmm. Very nice. 
nice. You notice that uh, everybody's kind of taking a look at the ale. Around the tavern, as you saw in that picture, there are a couple different uh, species of people. And the ones that stand out are at a table towards the uh, towards the other side of the room. Blue blue skinned people that are kind of having their own conversation. They seem to be lightly clad, mostly uh, loincloths, some boots, a little bit of scarf here, a little bit of maybe a crag shell. Here or there, they have spears stacked up near one of the tent poles, but mostly minding their business. There's a couple other humanoids, mostly human, a dwarf here or there. Most of the patrons are kind of ignoring their uh, the other patrons and going on about their business. Willie, um, would you mind if we ask you some questions? He says, well, I, I don't mind. What, what can I help you with? Seeing as you do appear to have, uh, as you said, you're the center of this town, you're like the place to, to know things. Um, we're here looking for something. We think it's probably a book, but we really don't know. Um, but it's called, or what we call it anyways, is the Opus Paterna. <coughs> Effectively, it, we believe it would help us to better understand the, the gates. Does this mean anything to you? Hmm. I... I don't believe I've ever heard of uh, Opus Eterna. I know that the monasteries have books nearby uh, to them, but they're far to the west in, in other baronies. I know the barony of Maribek type it out for spelling purposes has an abbey called St. Albert's of the soil but I don't know anything about it if you're looking for a book I can you would probably need to head out that way I wouldn't. You do look capable. I have heard rumor that the Shakes nearby has a large collection of treasures that it's taken off of creatures. If you're looking for something rare, you might find it there. But that's a dangerous creature. It's a crag killer. What, what did you call it? He says we call it the shakes. He says it's. Well, we, he says, well, we here, we farm the beetles. We kill the drones for food and fashion their shells into armor. And without a healthy bull to fertilize Maribel, we're not going to be able to keep our herd growing. There's many bulls fighting, but the shakes has been running them off and killing them. And without the drones, we don't have enough food to keep everybody fed and the bulls are rare enough and the shakes is is a beast that took up residence in the gully that we call the gash and he's been killing bulls and passerbys and he's supposedly got himself a nice treasure hoard you might find what you're looking for there that's quite interesting thank you if not I mean, there. we did just eat two bulls in the in the streets outside of town. They might be dead by sundown by the shakes, depending on if it's awake or not. 
the shakes is is this one creature or is this like a like a species of creatures he says it's a winged beast with five heads now that's that's what they say they say it's got teeth as long as daggers and great bat wings that blot out the sun and eyes that sparkle like gemstones and can turn a man to stone and he draws uh, lightning draw. bolts from the sky and but that's that's what they say so it's somewhat of an urban legend you'll you'd say no we know he's real we're just not sure what he looks like This is it. Has anybody seen any remnants of what this creature does? This is the guard captain who let you in, Roly. He saw it in one of the patrols. If you're if you're gonna go, we could make it worth your time to kill the shakes. They probably won't let you into its horde without killing it anyways. We might just take you up on that. What solve two problems? One, for us, potentially finding something we need, and two, helping the crag beetle population. That's true. If you wouldn't mind, I have a few follow-up questions. He gives a nod, and his daughter comes over and does does our best to kind of keep your mugs full. My next question is, um, like, I assume the, the groups that came before us came through here? There have been a few. Where are they now, do you know? He says there's there's been... There's been a few. I'd I'd have to think about it. I'm I'm, I'm not by way of s soliciting you to kill the shakes, but uh, if you would give me a, a day or two, I can talk to people and get you a little better information. Even if you weren't interested in chasing down the shakes. Okay, well, we could appreciate that. We have had run-ins with a group known as, uh, well, with a species known as the Jaglodyne. Does that mean anything to you? He shakes his head. He says, never heard of him. Is there any type of, like, organization or group that is perhaps unfriendly to outsiders uh, on Rise that we should be worried about? <laughs> He says there's numerous barbarians on the wastelands, some less friendly than others. He kind of gives a slight inclination of his head towards the blue-skinned, loincloth-shrouded creatures. But he says some of them are friendly, so you can't judge them all. After everybody's drinks are filled, the female were rat kind of makes her way away. Glares notwithstanding. Wooly seems <laughs> to not notice it and asks if you have any other questions. I think I just had one final question. Uh, I don't know if about anybody else in the group. My last question was just, um, do you provide um, like areas of rest? He says, we don't have any specific dedicated areas but we do have uh, areas around the fire we let visitors have we can provide a bed roll if you need one or roll one out on next to the fire it's largely peaceful nobody bothers you excellent well likely take you up on that as well 
there's no end in town. And he says, this is it. I do have a small question myself. Uh, what are the groups that came before us? Are they around or? He says, none of them are in town. And I can get you more information. I just got to talk to folk. All right. I'll have a, in a day or two. All right. Not a problem. Anybody else have any questions for Willie? Um, yeah, just in case on the off chance we need it, is there like any sort of, uh, like, like work we can do in case we need to like, uh, gather some coin or anything? He says, if you plan on killing the, killing the shakes, I might have a mission for you and I can, I could get you together a couple hundred coins as payment for the shakes and I've heard that is a, a large horde that you would have if you killed it too very tempting well, we'll have to discuss as a group and determine if it's something we want to explore he gives a nod make sure your food is full and makes his way away Anybody else have any questions for Willie when he comes back? No, I don't believe so. Um, I think we should go have a quick conversation with these barbarians, as he referred to. And I'd like to nudge my head towards the, the blue skin guys. See if they know anything about the working of the gates. Sometimes tribal people have Long lost knowledge. Oh, wait, I did have a question. Uh -huh. <laughs> Estrella just shakes her head because she's been preoccupied with other things. Um, <laughs> she will, when Wooly comes back, uh, she'll ask, Oh, um, do you know any druid uh, or druidic type groups in the area? Anywhere nearby that would have some connection to the land? He doesn't f fully understand the word druidic, but when you explain connection to the land, he says there's your best bets the monasteries out west, people, folk like that. Wonderful. Thank you so much. He gives a nod, make sure everybody's food is topped off, drinks are foamingly neon green to the brim I would uh, I would offer it some coin as like a, a tip and say thank you for the information and for the food it thanks you and takes the coin and that would be 10 gold pieces I gave it that is a, that is a hell of a tip big spender does it does it appear like it's a hell of a tip? Like does Willie appear like whoa or no? It's it's a hell of a tip, and it's very obvious. Like okay. in terms of like if you were buying an ale, it cost you four copper for a mug. You know, it, it, ten ten gold it, it would would, and a standard inn would probably get you a banquet for yeah, one yeah. person. So oh, this yeah. is a good way to this is a good way to buy loyalty and also help determine like just how much coin actually does matter here it, so it's he, pretty when he said he could give us a lot of coin a couple hundred but like gold pieces even he didn't specify right yeah 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 so yeah that could be a couple hundred copper give like, 100 money. copper for killing what yeah. sounds like a dragon so the we shouldn't rely on the money as, as the main factor here like it's if we think that killing it would be awesome and or um, provide loot opportunities. That's that should be the main goal. All right. Well, it seems like a fantastic time to end our game this week. Could we could we talk to the blue folks quick? You may can. Absolutely. I'm not in any hurry. Nelka, could you please walk over with me? Very well. And as we walk over, I'll just say. Greetings to you all. 
So the all four of them, there's four, look up at you at, with stoic faces. And they give you a nod without acknowledging. With honor and respect, we are hoping to learn from you. And is there a way we could obtain knowledge from you about the gates, such as the one in the water, somewhere nearby? They listen to you, then they kind of look at each other for a couple seconds. And then they look back at you without answering, without making a motion, without acknowledging in terms of having heard you, other than the fact that they did each other after you spoke. And they just continue to stare at you in a very unwelcoming way. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'll, I'll cast uh, Detect Thoughts. I was thinking about doing the same, but I won't. Yeah, I'll, I'll just jump right into that. Um, but I'm starting it off on the minimal level, so it's just a matter of, like, like what are their surface thoughts? Uh, Which they, you can't, get their... they can't... They, they're not aware I'm probing them at that point. Correct. And the surface thoughts are towards you and pretty much everybody in the town detestation, a disapproval of the way of life, just general disgust. And your general presence isn't really improving that. I will bow and say thank you for your time and then just walk away. Uh, Wooly then makes his way back over to the table. Um, and then he says, they don't, they don't really talk much. They are, they wander the way. Their people are native to the wastelands. Their, their <laughs> coins as good as anybody else's, but they've caused no trouble. I know they got a camp somewhere to the west, but when they're in town, they don't mix with us. They come to sell and buy. What wares do they typically carry? They say, well, they bring more crag beetle parts, wild animals domesticate. They bring plants and rare materials. What kind of plants? Anything native to this planet? Mostly the moss we use for the egg. What about seeds? He shakes his head. The ground is not good for farming here. But I've heard That's some of the other baronies have much greener land than we do. So it's just this area that's barren? He gives a shrug. He says, I couldn't say I've never been outside. But... And the rumor is, other areas are prospering, while we are not. How long, if you don't mind me asking, have you suffered at the hands of this plague? I can't... I can't say how long, per se, but I know it's gone back every generation of my family for at least a couple hundred years. Interesting. It's a hell of a time. Then it turns to Wooly and is like, Hey, um, sorry if this may seem kind of a little weird. Uh, has anyone sold anything like any, like any metals, scrap, mechanical parts? He shakes his head and no. Huh, figured. Alright. Thanks anyway. He gives a nod. And you notice that uh, the sun's kind of making its way down. People are starting to roll out some bedrolls and 
get settled in for the night. I suppose we could do the same. Mm -hmm. I would recommend uh, saving your spell preparation for next game. I'm going to apply a long rest. You can do it now if you so desire. But if, just for simplicity, give yourself inspiration if you added to the uh, notes. I'm not going to police it. As I said, I will say those of you who have been added, since there was a second one for Fort Buckle, I went ahead and threw the Fort Buckle into the rise. That way, as you move through, you can reference the different notes. If you visit a monastery, you'll have the note linked. To that make uh, so well, That's all I I Go just ahead. have a small question. Since uh, Willie confirmed that there really weren't a whole lot of metal or mechanical parts, uh, would I be able to construct an Eldritch Cannon? Yes, you're not going to be hindered from your... Oh, okay then. I, we could start that the one. parts? Yeah. The biggest issue you're going to run into is if it keeps getting destroyed. Okay. Plenishment, we're going to have an issue. Fine then, I guess we could... I wish I could go ahead and just erase the, the one thing that I, I put on the fort buckle here. I was like, okay, we could just disregard that then. I'll go ahead and see about constructing one over the night then. Sounds good. And I can take a look if need be. I I got a plethora of time. If you need me to do anything, shoot me a message. I can construct it. All right. But that's all I got. I'll be on for a few hours. I'll leave the server for a bit if anybody wants to fine-tune their leveling or anything like that. I'm going to step away for five minutes but I will be back after that. If you do head away, I will see you guys later. Uh, yeah. GG, everyone. All right. Good game, guys. Yeah, good game. Mm -hmm. Game. Good night, guys. Night. Wait, where we're at, a bitch is going down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> yeah. I don't know how to react to that. <laughs> <laughs> Something going night, on guys. between Australia and Hazel. <laughs> <laughs> Night. Night. There you go.